So uh, yeah, thanks for inviting me to speak. I appreciate it. I'm always happy to uh, share my perspective on Urbit because I, I just think still it's one of the most interesting and exciting things happening in the world right now. And I, and still everyone seems to be sleeping on it. So I'm always happy to have an opportunity to sit down and try to elucidate my thoughts and perspective uh, more clearly. And so this was a welcome opportunity to do that. And so what I'd like to talk about today is I won't speak too long. I'll aim for probably about 20 minutes and I think there's gonna be some Q and A and discussion. So plenty of time for that. What I'd like to talk about today is the concept of social AI. Uh, I'd like to talk about social AI or social artificial intelligence on Urbit, because I think that this is one way to summarize something that is coming down the pike in Urbit that pretty much I think just no one even, if you're not in, the, maybe if you're in the Urbit ecosystem, you can kind of squint and see this kind of thing coming. Maybe a lot of you do have some intuitions that will resonate with what I'm going to try to explain more formally today. But I think for most people outside of the Urbit ecosystem, uh, the the concept I'm going to sketch today is is not even really on anyone's radar. And this is the kind of just insanely exciting uh, potential that I think we're seeing on Urbit uh, that normal people outside of Urbit with their old school, you know, computer networks can't even really fathom. OK, so uh, that's going to be the, to the topic today, social social artificial intelligence or social AI. So basically, it's never been possible for an arbitrary number of average internet users to combine Turing complete computation and financial liquidity within one seamless integrated operating system and graphical inter uh, graphical user face, uh, graphical user interface, let's say. And so that's one kind of claim I want to make at the beginning, just to reflect on that, th that what I just described, it, it's never really been possible. And no one even really feels this to be a lack because you know the internet as we know it does give us a lot of tremendous affordances and it emerged you know uh, relatively quickly in, in the scheme of things and so people are you know quite pleased with what the current internet can can give them and yet it's hard for us to even sense or feel how much more insanely powerful it could be and so this is one way to describe something that us as you know computer users the world you know the, the world of computer users could uh, enjoy could have at their fingertips and yet we don't, or we can't, or we haven't yet. Um, and we don't even feel it as a problem because we so naturalized uh, the, the current environment. And so what I would submit to you, my contention today will be that given a technical environment where those conditions hold, where there, where an, an arbitrary number of average internet users can engage in Turing complete computation and exchange financial liquidity in one seamless integrated operating system and graphical user interface, wherever those conditions hold, we should expect over time for something to emerge, which I propose to call social AI or social artificial intelligence. And I think, you know, I could give you some textbook definitions of what AI is technically or whatever, but I think most of us have uh, reasonably convergent intuitions around, you know, what artificial intelligence is roughly. And so I think that would be kind of boring. And I think the best way to proceed to really make this case to you or explain where I'm going with this and, and what I see uh, is to start with a little bit of a, a story around what are the current limitations on contemporary social networking that prevent something like um, a social AI from emerging. So we'll kind of we'll kind of proceed via negativa, if you will. So let's look at, for instance, like uh, a social network such as Reddit. I think Reddit is a good case study because if you squint, you can kind of see that Reddit in a, in a certain way is actually quite impressive in the way that it's able to produce something that almost looks a little bit like a social AI. Let's call it a hive mind, the, the, the state of social networking just short of a full social AI, we'll, we'll, we'll give this the nickname Hive Mind, and and I think it's very uh, intuitive to see that Reddit and the specifically the subreddits. For, I'm sure everyone here knows how Reddit works, so I won't I won't uh, belabor the point. But on Reddit, you know, there's multiple different verticals, right? There's multiple Reddits. They're called subreddits, and each one is dedicated to a certain shared interest. And um, you know, it's pretty quotidian now to say it, uh, that these are little internet hive minds. We actually use this language in everyday speech, right? So most, most people know what I mean when I say that, but let's break it down. Let, let's look at what are the moving parts of a subreddit as a kind of uh, proto social AI or, or what we'll call a hive mind. Basically, there's only a few moving parts you need to have uh, a hive mind. You have on Reddit, you know, there's a shared interest per subreddit. The members of a subreddit post content for other members of the subreddit to see members can vote on the quality of that posted content on Reddit. They're called upvotes or downvotes. And then pretty much all that happens is the content that's most loved by the voting members 
gets the most visibility to all of the rest of the members, right? So this is a very, very simple, very constrained system. There's not too much going on here, right? And yet it's quite impressive how this really, really simple and constrained kind of social computational system can produce pretty stellar results. You know, a lot of the most active subreddits are really quite remarkable in how, how effective they are at surfacing the, the content that is of greatest interest to a large number of people in that community. And, and so in terms of motivating members to do the work of sharing valuable content, of, of sharing targeted curated content that actually resonates with the large number of other members and uh, really locking in that, that kind of feedback loop, if you will, between posters and readers, that Reddit has been really quite tremendous. And, and really take a step, take a second to think about how insanely limited Reddit is. Uh, but namely, I wanna zero in on two specific limitations, okay? Uh, one is that basically, you know, members of a subreddit can only execute a highly constrained set of operations, right? All you can really do is post words or images to this kind of shared space where everyone can see things, right? Um, and then on the other side of the equation, you can like or dislike those words or images that other people post. Think about how incredibly simple and constrained that is. Users of Reddit are really not able to use like 99% of the power of their computer together, right? And yet, it's still so impressive. It's still it's still really quite remarkable how targeted and valuable these these you know kind of collective decentralized curation engines really can be. And that's using so little of what a computer can do, right? So that's the first limitation, extreme limitation on what types of operations users can use together, right? But the second limitation, which is also massive, is that all of the in-platform incentives on a site like Reddit are perfectly illiquid or and non-transferable, right? It's 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 in-game tokens, if you will, that don't go anywhere else. You get points, you get Reddit gold. You know, Reddit is now trying to kind of post hoke add on, you know, some some crypto, some crypto rails, you know, but um for the most part, all the value that you create as a member of a subreddit, you get cultural capital and kind of in-game tokens within that community, but you can't turn that into money. So the, what this means is that the 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 incentives, the upside is extremely limited, like um, how much investment and effort you can really extract from the members of a subreddit is extremely contained because the upside is extremely contained. Okay, so um, imagine if instead every member of a subreddit could post, not instead of just posting words or images, they could basically execute any arbitrary computer program. Imagine that, right? And then the and, and then in some ways that would be made available or opened up to the other members of the subreddit. And then in turn, instead of just liking or disliking, the other members of that subreddit could also execute any arbitrary computer program in response to the content or the program being posted by you know the, the OP as it were, the original poster. Okay. If you start to think that through, it, it starts to be get it starts to be kind of mind bending, right? Um, uh, it's it's kind of almost uh, so crazy. It's hard to, it's hard to think through what that would really look like or what kinds of patterns we would expect to see. Um, also, imagine if instead of just upvoting or downvoting, you know, members who really liked a particular piece of content posted on a subreddit could actually pay real money, right? And this, people have thought about this for a while, ever since the crypto revolution really kind of took hold. You know, there have been a lot of efforts to do social networks where people actually transfer, you know, economically liquid tokens, and none of those have really taken off yet. Um, okay, uh, and that's fine, but that, you know, that might have something to do with the fact that these are incredibly limited and arbitrary, like contained uh, social environments, right? Uh, there's not like a massive, all the social networks that have tried to do like token token arrangements there's really no strong pull onto that. There's, there's, they, they've never been able to uh, create a genuine network effect in terms of social users and genuine, genuine activity, right? So, on the other hand, if you look where you know digital liquidity is actually being transferred, and uh, you know where you see the 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 social uh, artificial intelligence vector pursued, uh, you know, in a, in a somewhat impressive fashion, you might also cite like the the blockchain. Uh, Ethereum, right? In particular, it's often called a kind of global computer. And that's partially true, right? You can run computer code on, on the Ethereum blockchain and you can make it interact with digital money. And that's very cool for sure. That's revolutionary and, and very, very powerful, uh, especially in this direction of really making a kind of seamless uh, social AI. But the problem with Ethereum is that there's no operating system or integrated execution environment where individual human beings can log on and easily execute 
uh, computer programs like with their friends, average internet users, there's no place to go where you can all, you and all your friends around shared interests can execute arbitrary computer programs on the Ethereum blockchain. That's not possible in any way whatsoever, in part because there's no operating system where those different individual computers could link into each other and, and network and compute with each other, uh, you know, seamlessly. Uh, and so what you have is a, a just like with Reddit, Reddit is really amazing, actually, and, and how much of a hive mind it can generate this really novel and powerful kind of social formation, social intellectual kind of engine uh, with extreme limitations. Ethereum is basically a, a similar uh, situation where you have, you know, multi-million dollar DAOs, many of them now, uh, that run on Ethereum. And they kind of, if you squint, you can kind of see that they are kind of like social AIs in some degree. They're just incredibly high friction. And it's not like individual, not the, it's not the case that any number of arbitrary individual computer users can simply plug in and start running computer operations with, with each other. That's not true at all because there's no execution environment for that to take place. And so um, what you do see is what do you, you know, they have discord communities, right? Most of, most of the you know, DAOs run on Discord and then they'll glue that to Snapshot, you know, the Snapshot tool where you can do, you know, token voting, um, you know, it, it will kind of automatically measure how many tokens, um, you know, members of a group have and you can do votes that are token weighted through the Snapshot tool. And then, you know, the treasury will be held in, in a Gnosis safe tip, typically. So you have this kind of stack, this incredibly clumsy stack of tools where there are these kind of proto social AIs, these proto, these hive minds, if you will, that are actually now moving huge sums of money around uh, with shared goals. And, and they're, they're kind of making it work. And, and, it, and I, I see it as very similar to, to Reddit in the sense that it's amazing how much money is being moved around and how much is getting done given these incredible uh, handicaps, basically. Uh, so the problem, in, in short, to summarize the problem with Ethereum right now, and the reason why Ethereum is not actually giving rise to genuine social AIs is that the 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 feedback loops between the group's goals and and the uh, execution of social judgment within the group you know the, the the many minds in the group actually applying judgment and decision uh and the rewards that are distributed for the effort of individual members the the feedback loops are incredibly high friction and and slow and in fact they're almost so high friction that they they doesn't even really exist in the link between discord and snapshot token voting and movement of money from Gnosis Safe to you know the the changing of smart contracts on on Ethereum, it's all so crappy and slow and high friction that there's really no feedback loop at all. Uh, it, it, there's nothing you know. There are these protocols being managed in this fashion, but there's nothing like the everyday social intelligence of a Reddit, right? Um, that, taking place on Ethereum. So so you can kind of see Reddit and Ethereum as two powerful examples of how we already have these proto social AIs, um, but they're both extremely limited. And, and it's impressive how much each one of them can do given their extreme handicaps. And so you probably guess where this is all going. This is essentially one way to understand why I'm so insanely bullish on Urbit, because I think that essentially Urbit is the first operating system that will combine, that does, it already does this, right? And it already functions. It still has to be kind of, you know, developed and, and, and fully fleshed out. But Urbit works. It, Urbit is here. There's thousands of users already. And Urbit is the first fully functional operating system that combines Turing complete computation on the one hand and financial liquidity at the level of average internet users. Now, the financial liquidity is not fully here yet. Um, but I'm going to talk about a few projects that are happening right now, which I'm sure you're all aware of. I'm, I'm sure they're kind of representatives of all of these projects in, in the audience right now. Um, but what I want to basically sketch out for you is what I think a social AI will look like on Urbit. Um, using you know using these uh conditions basically when these conditions are fully established when financial liquidity is fully introduced in, and and you know fully uh you know manipulable on the urbit platform with you know turing complete urbit computers i want to just kind of sketch um just one quick kind of toy example right it's not it's nothing like uh particularly Impressive. It's not like, you know, this is how we're going to solve, you know, malaria or we're going to, this is how we're going to get to the moon or something like that. It's, it's no, you know, grand, amazing, you know, startup pitch deck or anything like that. But it's, it's something that it's just a toy example of that I can see already coming down the pike and I'm kind of already playing with and I'm, I'm, I kind of already have this almost functioning. I'm just waiting for a few new things to ship uh, that will, that will make things click into place. And this is something that I think you can like look forward to in the next year or so. All right. So, um, 
look, consider for instance, so what I want to do is I want, I want to kind of paint this, I want to paint a picture for you. I want to um, kind of show you what I think uh, social AI will look like on Urbit um, with just a few moving parts that are all of which are already here basically. So most of you are probably familiar with the studio app, right? On Urbit, it's, it's basically Urbit's Substack clone, if you will. There's also the ballot app. app ballot is basically um, a snapshot clone on Urbit, lets people do voting. Um, and there's no reason not to expect that it will be integrated with tokens. And then of course, of course, Ukbar. Uh, Ukbar is the, one of the most exciting uh, projects being, you know, being developed right now. I'm sure many of you are aware with it, uh, aware of it. You know, a lot of, uh, a lot of Urbit's like top engineering talent has uh, kind of stopped what they're doing to work on Ukbar. Uh, because it's 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 that promising, and Ukbar is basically uh, a layer two on Ethereum, but built natively into Urbit using uh, zk rollups. So um, all these things are happening. Well, Studio and Ballot are already here. Ukbar is in development, but um, we're expecting to see you know things really shipping uh, within the next year. So so let's just sketch out how even just these three moving parts, which are already more or less already here or immediately coming. You can already kind of see, if you squint, you can see how this is going to melt people's faces off, basically. So let's say you set up a studio newsletter. Again, studio is the Substack clone on Urbit. And it lets basically all the members of a group publish to an email newsletter and a, and a public facing blog, just like, just like Substack essentially. But what's cool is it's got kind of native multi-author support. So anyone within a group that has access to publishing a post in an Urbit notebook uh, in landscape, that, that, that whoever, writes that post, the content of that post will automatically get sent out to this email list, which is public facing and anyone out on the normal current internet can sign up to this email newsletter, um, you know, run through studio, but, but published via Urbit shipped, you know, the actual content is shipped from the Urbit. Um, and so you can, you can set it so that anyone maybe, you know, you have a group on Urbit that has, you know, 10,000 people like, like a subreddit or something like that. And you can make it so not just any member of the subreddit can post to you know, this little walled garden on Reddit where you can only post images and words to within a Reddit. But now imagine a group of 10,000 people with shared interest on something specific, just like a subreddit, can actually publish quality content out to the world and start accumulating subscribers. Well, that's kind of interesting because, well, guess what? Uh, you know, a newsletter, a, a blog, a newsletter is a public facing operation and that's potentially cash flow positive, right? There's, there, there, there are many, you know, um, profitable business operations that are based on newsletters, right? You can, you can run a newsletter business. So that's kind of interesting. Okay. Let, let's pause on that. Um, and, and move on to the next one, which is, you know, you can still have the same kind of hive mind judgment process that you have on Reddit, right? Members of the group can decide which posts to the, to the, to the group notebook are the best ones. And you can just basically institute some kind of rule through the ballot app, you know, ballot, the ballot app has this, a very nice kind of custom action, uh, opening, right? It's already there. So you can right now write using Hoon code, you can write custom actions for the ballot app, which basically says that if, uh, you know, there's a majority vote or you define the, you define the voting rules as you want, if a ballot approves of something and the vote is yes or no, you can define custom computations that are triggered programmatically from the result of that uh, ballot. And already this is kind of more interesting and more impressive than Snapshot, which I believe, someone correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, a Snapshot does not actually operate on chain. So it's like, uh, maybe maybe it's recorded on chain or something like that, but it's not like when you vote, when your DAO votes with Snapshot, you know, to assign, you know, X amount of ETH to some entity. I don't believe that Snapshot actually can trigger that movement of funds programmatically, maybe it can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that it doesn't. So already we're getting really interesting uh, powers that you don't see other, otherwise, because you can basically define your ballot uh, voting unit to trigger actions programmatically, pretty much like smart contracts, but guess what? No gas fees. So already that's, that alone is, is, is very interesting and, and remarkable and very attractive. Okay. But let's say you program it so that if the group decides if a majority of people in this 10,000 group, which is kind of like a shared interest subreddit group on, but, but on Urbit decides that some new post in the notebook is worthy. It's very good. It's high quality. It's worthy of being sent out to the public list, all the people who signed up to, 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 to receive email updates. And then, okay, then it will automatically get published out to the email list uh, programmatically. And also let's say you can define in the ballot app that the author of that post gets paid a certain amount from the group treasury. Okay. And of course, now I'm kind of assuming that Ukbar 
uh, it's kind of providing the back end for this. Um, uh, but I, there's no reason to expect this isn't going to happen. Uh, I, I, I speak regularly with uh, developers of Oakbar, and you know they're some of the smartest people in the urban ecosystem. And I have, I mean, I'm I just have the utmost confidence that that it's going to happen, that it's going to work. There's going to be this kind of like financial, um, you know, manipulability within Urbit, right? So you can absolutely imagine. I think you can bet on it. I think you can bet on it. A custom action in Ballot that says, okay, if this is approved, send X amount of you know token to this author who proposed this post, right? And um, that could move money out of a real treasury. And if you, if you, if you really just take a step back and think about what that already is, you, that simple little toy operation. This is just three moving parts, which are either already on orbit or coming within the next year. That already is a, a, a social computational formation that we've never seen ever, which is a potentially cash flow positive public facing business operation, which is not just like a protocol, so not just a software protocol, but actually like a media operation, right? A, a, a newsletter, which could potentially make money, could potentially take paying subscribers, right? And that maybe the maybe the, subs, the subscription payments that come in go to the group treasury, and that's where p authors get paid, right? And it could be basically governed by the decentralized distributed intelligence of thousands and thousands of people with shared interests. And so that is essentially a kind of machinic social artificial intelligence because it's leveraging computation, it's leveraging computer machines, and it's going to be by definition smarter than any one of those 10,000 people individually. Okay. And uh, this is full computation, full, full financial liquidity uh, with virtually no limit on, on either one of those dimensions. This is just one toy example. This is something that you cannot build anywhere else. And, it, and it, it really is a kind of, um, it, it's, it's a real level change in what it means for us to use our computers together, to be able to finally kind of merge complete social computation, networked computation, and, you know, maximum financial liquidity and financial, you know, uh, manipulability. So this is just a toy example. Uh, but I think it's only just the beginning, right? I think you can, uh, I think it's a useful toy example, because it's, it's basically already here. It's not speculative. It's not pie. It's a little speculative, but this is not crazy pie in the sky abstract. You know, I'm going to sell you on some kind of some big ambitious, you know, uh, pitch deck. This is like I I would expect something like this to be fully oper fully operating in like a year or or two or something like that. And so um, yeah, you know, if a group is dedicated to let's say like sharing the best architecture photos to the world or selecting stock picks, maybe to think of an even more, you know, kind of financially motivated uh, and compelling, you know, practical kind of example of what a, a social AI could do, then this group using these affordances, which you can't get anywhere else because Urbit is the only integrated, you know, execution environment where these things can be combined without limit. You know, you can imagine like full blown media operations and, and kind of truth seeking machines that are smarter than any other individual within the group individually and paying members uh, precisely on the value of the contributions that they make. So this is to me like what what DAOs really um, portend. What's really exciting about DAOs and social computation uh, on blockchains and using you know the the financial you know uh, motivations and incentives that uh, we have at our fingertips. This this is what's really going to unlock it. And I think uh, on, this can only happen on Urbit. So that's my concept of social AI. And, and thank you for inviting me to you know spend a few minutes. Kind of developing that a little bit more formally. I've talked about this in different places, but uh, this was this was a rewarding uh, opportunity to try to sketch it out in a little bit more detail. So I think I'll cut myself off there, and there should still be some time for questions if uh, people want to talk about this. I'm happy to take questions or just comments, however you want to do it. Um, so you touched upon the the concept of like hive mind publishing, um, and having this like a um, private and public discourse uh, that is moderated by Urbit. Um, how do you foresee this happening with, say, like uh, actually identifiable identity in the you know, uh, DAO that's either formed on native to Urbit uh, and um, showing that as, as like part of uh, public discourse, but like it, that, that's already happening right now with some groups like Anonymous um but you know you're now making it possible for uh, commerce to happen based on sort of like opinion pieces to go out and all that stuff <clears throat> um what do you think will be like the very first use use case like uh so what i mean like what kind of group will be doing this first i i, I just want to take uh, get your take on that 
Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. And I mean, my, 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 the, this has been controversial, I guess, in the past, but my, so I, I don't know that this is necessarily going to be the first one, but my mind just always goes to the example of QAnon, because I think you know, what's interesting about QAnon is that it was this highly decentralized uh, kind of truth seeking process. And now, yeah, of course, you're going to laugh at that because it was all crazy and all over the place and uh, incredibly like, deranged and unhinged in, in many ways. And, and so uh, when I say truth seeking process, all I mean is that, you know, if you actually looked into how QAnon operated, the way it actually functioned was the, the leader of this group, Q, really didn't say very clear things that, and tell everyone what to think. He dropped these incredibly ambiguous clues. And the, the real uh, bulk of activity, the social activity, the social computation, if you will, of the members of QAnon was really dedicated to going out and sleuthing and trying to make sense out of Q's mysterious drops is what they were called. And so, you know, that was a particularly kind of unhinged uh, example of it, but it was a, a very profound example of a kind of uh, socially and politically um, uncontrolled and uh, uh, wild, autonomous, decentralized uh, kind of goal-seeking or truth-seeking operation. And it was, of course, you know, uh, subject to all of the, all of the extreme problems and biases that you it would expect when you have this kind of happening uh, in the wild, right? Um, so I'm not in any way saying that it, it, it like effectively converged on the truth or anything like that. But you can you can see that abstractly the actual social formation was something like this. And I think in a world where there's incredible amounts of distrust and uh, antipathy really towards you know governing institutions and elites and and especially elite messaging. I mean, just no one really believes anything they read in the news anymore. Uh, and, and there's extraordinary amounts of cynicism and skepticism and, and, and anger as well, you know, real, real kind of populist frustration and uh, a, a, a kind of corresponding passion and interest in trying to figure out what the truth is, um, e even on one's own devices, however, you know, uh, 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 you know <laughs> however wrong people might be. Um, I actually think that that sort of thing um, could very well be one of the like, truly momentous and kind of extraordinary um, cases where Urbit actually um, does uh, kind of like catch fire in a way with, with popular people, right? Of course, there's this kind of shared narrative right now that a lot of people have, which is, you know, that Urbit is going to be like the Web3 Discord. It's going to be, you know, uh, it, it's going to suck, uh, you know, DAOs into it uh, thanks to its affordances. And that's all well and good. And I think that's cool and, and, very, and very likely and great. Um, but when we think about like actually changing kind of the social, you know, the, the, the surface of our society as we know it and changing the way that actual people, you know, do computing together, that, that is kind of one use case where, where I could see it happening. I mean, I think you make an also a good example of, uh, you know, anonymous or, um, you know, if you look at someone like, uh, something like WikiLeaks, right? Like I think the next iteration of something like WikiLeaks could absolutely be like, imagine Wik WikiLeaks with like legit kind of zero knowledge shrouding and financial like programmable financial liquidity right like it's a completely different um you know calculus right i i think you i think you could imagine something like wikileaks happening again but this time in like a a, a tremendously financialized and unstoppable way uh so those are some case studies that 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 my mind often goes to so i think this is a interesting topic you brought up and when I think about this, I sometimes think about what happens when the in what you call it, the incentives of the art of the artificial intelligence really take a life of their own on and become separated from the intentions of the people who built it. And once something like that has the ability to financially reward people with liquidity, then you have questions like, oh, well, what happens when you're basically a serf who works for a computer or you have a computer that is, you know, using its serfdom to do crazy shit in the world. What do you think about this as a potential negative outcome of this idea you discussed? So, yeah, I think it's a great question. It's uh, it's an important question. Yeah, and I, I think it's a valid concern. I guess the way that I think about it is that basically in... I guess I tend to think about this in life and about life in general. You know, there there really is a battle between good and evil. That that, that is often how how I do see even, even you know the the contemporary world, the past and the future. It's like yeah, I mean, Urban is incredibly powerful, and there's going to be bad actors trying to do bad things with it, and um, you know, there are going to be people building social AIs that yeah, basically 
try to kind of persuade and coax and suck into their operations, you know, low, low skilled, you know, low agency, uh, perhaps low IQ people, uh, just who, you know, I, I don't mean any disrespect. I just mean, you know, there are, uh, inequalities in ability and there's inequalities in resources. And yeah, I think you can absolutely imagine, and probably you should bet on, you know, certain actors trying to kind of in a populist way, stoke resentment, attract a kind of, uh, farm of, you know, uh, under-resourced, um, underpaid serfs, if you will, kind of churning, churning, you know, social computation and, uh, you know, social effort for all kinds of malignant purposes. I mean, you do just have to expect it. I, I know like some people in the urban ecosystem don't like when I think about this stuff or talk about this stuff because it just kind of sounds bad. Yeah, I know. But like if urban's going to take over the world, if urban's going to take over the internet and become a totally new internet, then you have to just figure that, you know, all the bad stuff that happens on the internet is going to come over onto urban in some fashion. But what I also think is that the, there are um, kind of, the urban provides a kind of multiplier for people who are, I think for people who have a kind of superior understanding of, you know, human needs and, and kind of human nature, if you will, that this is one hypothesis, right? That, you know, I think people who do good in, in some kind of interesting way have an edge over people who do bad uh, in general. Um, you know, and I think you can kind of argue that this is, this is a kind of long-term historical gradient. I think you kind of see this in, you know, the, the work of someone like uh, St. Augustine, right? This idea that there's the city of earth and there's the city of God. And it does look like if you look very closely, you know, over human history, it does seem to me, I, I tend to agree uh, with, with St. Augustine in, in that it, it does look like the, the city of God will win in the end. Uh, and, and there are, you know, if you read Augustine closely, he actually seems to have a kind of empirical model for this. You know, it's like a cause and effect. It's not just, a, this is not just a mystical thing. It's not a faith-based thing, although, you know, faith is an element of it. It's like, if you actually look, people who are good have, um, a slight edge in an empirical way, in a practical way. Um, and I'm not going to go down this whole rabbit hole, but, but that, that does seem to be, uh, one of the ideas of St. Augustine, which I take very seriously and which I tend to think is accurate. So I would, I would kind of cross apply that to, to the urban, uh, situation. People might think that that's like kind of weird or ridiculous or totally out of left field. Uh, but, but that's basically my answer. And, um, yeah, I think that people who are true and honest and have, uh, accurate mental models of the world, um, because they're true and they're honest are generally going to outcompete and outperform people who are liars or evil, um, because those people are going to have less, uh, effective mental models. And actually, you know, on something like on Urbit, the reason I, the reason I think that Urbit actually accentuates the kind of apocalyptic separation of the city of earth and the city of God, the, the way that the, the reason why Urbit actually multiplies the advantages of the good over the bad and accelerates that, that gap, that apocalyptic gap is, uh, precisely because um, it just adds all of this leverage, right? When you're adding financial liquidity in this highly seamless, low friction way, and you're adding social computation in this seamless, low friction way, what you're really doing is adding leverage. And that what that leverage means is that um, good projects are going to take off faster and bigger and go higher than ever. And bad projects that have even a little bit of stupidity in them or falsity or error in them those are going to kind of uh, sink and die and and collapse faster than ever uh, and and more stupendously than ever as well. Um, yeah, so I, so I think Urban just adds adds a ton of leverage to social uh, you know cooperation basically, and that's going to make the good projects you know the truly good capital G good projects win out over the the evil projects. I, I do I do believe that. Just a question, maybe strategically. I wonder if you've thought about this as far ahead as this is. You know, imagine you have some some super intelligence online now that's using some kind of thing like this and it has a bunch of crypto amassed and it identifies some particular group as hostile to it somehow and then all of a sudden there's all these smart contracts that's like you know and i don't want to hyperstition this into reality but oh for every one of them that you kill you get you know this amount of tokens and then you have these you know internet addicted day walkers come out of nowhere and kill you something like that and and you know any number of uh a weird dystopian scenario you could imagine. I wonder if you've thought about strategies that good people could engage in to prevent the emergence of those things when you sort of see them spinning up or to combat them if they become powerful. 
Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, I, I, I think you have to just kind of buckle up and brace for all kinds of chaos in the early days, right? I mean, you just have to price that in. I think it's it's unavoidable, right? Just like just like the early days of the blockchain, right? With the with uh, you know the big you know hacks that went down and uh, even even recent, you know, collapses of, of certain Ponzi structures, right? There's like in the early days of anything wild and big, like just like with crypto and and, and, and blockchain technology, there's going to be all kinds of chaos and you should just basically uh, plan accordingly for just expect, expect the worst to happen, uh, you know, in the early days of, of this kind of thing and just, you know, plan accordingly and, and, and act and allocate your effort uh, accordingly and hedge, hedge, hedge what you're doing accordingly. Uh, no, I don't mean that as financial advice, but I just mean like uh, practically, you know, expect that and uh, take take precautions or whatever. That's one answer, but I know that's not very satisfying. I mean, I think the second, perhaps more satisfying answer is that I do think that Urbit's opaque structure uh, comes in handy here. I, I think that the because what happen, what's actually going on within Urbit groups is relatively opaque to to most people. The the network itself is opaque, right? We th there's no way to even really know precisely at any given moment in time, how many people are on the network. That's, it's, it's literally just not legible to, to anyone uh, structurally. I do think that these kinds of uh, structural illegibilities, the structural opacity of the urban network is, is very, it, it's kind of like a break. Uh, it's kind of like a safety, it's almost like a safety mechanism. It's, it's, a, it's a break on things in a way. Um, because if you look at like a lot of what goes wrong with ETH, right? And like a lot of the, the crazy, you know, bad actors and, and bad phenomena that go on in the blockchain world uh, heretofore, you know, a, a, a lot of it, not all of it, but a lot of it has to do with the fact that these are all open ledgers, right? And um, it, it's, it seems like, I'm, I'm not certain about this, I'm kind of just uh, riffing here, kind of going off the cuff, but it, it seems to me that these like highly open ledgers, these highly open kind of structures, in a way, provide a lot of power, and um, it provides power to like bad actors. Basically, it provides surface. It provides a lot of surface area to bad actors, and I. So that that would be my second answer. That I think Urbit, in in, in Urbit's kind of uh, you know opacity and structural illegibilities, even just like with private groups being illegible to people outside of the groups. Um, to me, that is something to think about and and to 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 enjoy that and use that to its fullest. Because I think that should that should be a kind of uh, protective layer for a lot of things that that will kind of reduce the surface area for bad actors. I'm not so sure about this answer, but that that's kind of my my intuition. Thanks a lot. I got a question. Um, so you mentioned earlier about this high mind emerging that will engage in like uh, truth seeking activity or creating opinions or whatever, uh, creating sort of like a, a new you uh, uh, context surrounding uh, either a discovery of new fact or uh, new new, um, new philosophy, so to speak, right? So, what um, do you imagine these high um, uh, uh, minds or collective uh, uh, collectives that has a singular voice uh, having some sort of um, you know? A person who writes in the future, or like, are we creating a future where that is going to be the case? I mean, dis distinct from say, a corporate entity having a personhood where you know, you know, who owns what of this company and who the operators of, you know, this company is. Yeah, it's a really interesting question. I haven't really thought about that honestly, but I I like the spirit of the question, and it does make me wonder, you know, just listening to you. I haven't thought about this other than in the moment I was listening to you, but. You know, you can kind of imagine uh, a, a scenario where, you know, if you imagine this kind of social AI formation, you know, becoming somewhat popular, let's say there's, you know, thousands of social AIs out there in the wild operating in, let's say, uh, taking place within private urban groups, right? So you can imagine 10,000 functioning, you can imagine, let's just say 10,000 private urban groups are operating. And within each of those 10,000 urban groups, are about on average 10,000 people, right? Uh, but they're private groups, right? So really this could happen in the next five years and there would not even be any measure of it, right? It, it could happen and people wouldn't even know that it's there in, in any way other than, you know, rumor and and hearsay, right? Um, but in that kind of scenario, if if I'm right that something like social AI uh, is, is the kind of convergent equilibrium formation that you're gonna see, 
then you could imagine that each one of these social AIs pretty much produces like one shared public identity, right? You can imagine like um, each social AI, each Urbit group creates like they have one Twitter account, right? They have one uh, Reddit account. They have one, um, you know, public facing blog or newsletter or whatever. And so uh, facing out to the public world, you know, to the, to the clear web, to the, to the international system as it's currently, you know, codified by international law, there each one could actually, for all intents and purposes, be one actor, one identity, one entity, uh, maybe one Wyoming DAO LLC or something, right? Who knows? Um, and that is kind of interesting. I haven't really thought about that, but I, you could kind of imagine it. And then imagine that like Twitter, basically, instead of right now, like, like right now, Twitter is like, you know, millions of individual human beings competing to be like, oh, who's smarter than the other? Who has the most fire tweets, bro? You know, in, in, in 10 years, it's actually like every individual on Twitter is actually like this seemingly super high IQ, total Chad genius with like 80 million, no, no like, like 500 million or, you know, uh, 900 million followers because they tweet everyone on Twitter, every account on Twitter tweets like 1000 times a day. And every single tweet is incredibly intelligent, funny, hilarious, awesome content because each individual Twitter account is actually just the representative of this like massive hidden private uh, social AI. You know, uh, in a way you might have to expect what you're suggesting, this idea that it would all kind of push into individual identities because it's just kind of evolutionary game theory, right? Like if you have social AIs running Twitter accounts, that, that, that social AI is gonna be by far the smartest, most productive Twitter account in the world, right? So they're gonna rise to the top. And we can imagine a situation where in 10 years, on the clear web, no individual identity can even, you know, rise to the top because no one, no normal human being can compete with uh, the identities that will be uh, aggregated and, and promulgated by these uh, like hidden subterranean uh, social AIs on Urbit. So I, I like the spirit of your question. I, I think it's pointing to something that we could, we could totally imagine. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's, um, I think it's one of those things where, um, there was a, a Microsoft uh, pay, <laughs> pay, if you guys recall, um, and like the, the, it's, it's either we, we create a very, you know, super smart, very insightful AI, uh, or alternatively we create just like an emotional wreck. And, um, <laughs> but either way, I, I feel like it's going to create a very interesting, um, like, it's going to surface a very interesting like portion of like the human psyche. So that's that's the reason why I asked. So thank you very much for like kind of off the cuff like quick you know response. Thank you. I think that's all the questions, Justin. Let's give it up for Justin Murphy. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it.